Welcome to my side run of Bloodborne. This is our new character. As a counterpoint to Ichabod Banano, I've made her look normal. Not as cool. Anyway, go on. That's okay. Because her name is Vaginal Cannon Supreme. <laughs> Travis and I get that joke. It's an inside joke. The rest of you won't. It'll probably be mildly offended by it, but I don't care. You'll laugh anyway because it's the name. I mean... <laughs> sounds like something you get at Taco Bell. I just like anything with Supreme. <laughs> she is masterful. She went on a glorious date. Let's just say that. Oh, fancy glasses too. Yeah. I do say, Vaginal Cannon Supreme. Well, they don't warp around her face, which isn't as special, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's not no, that's not a pack, man. I can clearly tell that. <laughs> It's too bad all we have of that recording is just images. It's the legend that people will just have to follow. Is it just me, or did the update make this area a little bit brighter? I don't know. I recorded this before. Because this looks a little brighter than I remember. Maybe it's just your capture card or whatever. Well, I do have a pretty good capture card. So. Also, I didn't get a good opportunity to show this, but you can't actually kill the wolf without a weapon. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you gotta do it a very special way, but it is possible. Before we ever fight the wolf, you can't come here and glitch through him. Also, if you notice something that they added to this game is that, like in the old games, if you're opening doors, you're vulnerable to damage. In this game, not so much. It was kind of the case for that for uh, the previous Souls games. It just it depended on what end of the animation you were on. This one gives you a pretty wide berth. So you can come here. You can go to the lantern before actually dying. But some things are actually not active until you've died the first time. Mainly the puppet. Well, the puppet, you need um, insight. You need, like, I think one or two. I think you just actually just need one piece of insight. One or two, I don't remember. Right. Oh, yeah, what I'm thinking is once you've died the first time, you automatically go to the Hunter's Dream. Oh, right, right. Regardless of whether you've activated a lantern or not. The funny thing I noticed, if you actually go back to the lantern, you still do the cinematic where you're laying on the ground dead. <laughs> yeah. So that that's basically the way to kill an enemy without a weapon. Just backstab them or back punch them and then you can visceral attack them and even though your normal attacks do barely any damage the visceral is always just going to explode and it works on the wolf too <laughs> you just punch it in the butt and since we're back here after we've already fought the cleric beast now you can tell that loud scream is it which is pretty cool nice bit of foreshadowing except for when you fight it, it screams the whole time yeah this is the wrong side. <laughs> That's kind of like an ow, jerk. I like the little sachet he has. They got this kind of a gape in their legs. They're kind of spread apart. Really odd. God damn it. <laughs> I like how it just makes this little tiny blood sound where it's like not even like you don't even hear impact. Yeah. I'm trying to get a backstab, but at this point it's looking like I'm just going to end up killing him while attempting to do it anyway. Well, now, if you didn't care about, like, your items, you could just pick up those Molotovs and kill them, but... Yeah, right. That'd be such a waste. I need to do this for myself. <laughs> this is your parade. We never got an opportunity to look at your uh, stat alignment you built your character with. What's her, uh, what's Vaginal Cannon Supreme's abilities? I believe I've made her a war veteran. A milk with toast or a waste of skin. <laughs> One of these days. Wolfie. Let me butt stab you with my fist. The one that looks the most disgusting is the one where you backstab pigs. Yeah. That one just makes me uncomfortable. 
that leaping attack is the ideal time to do a backstab, but you gotta be swift. This game really loved to uh, up the amount of just hits that enemies do. Like, there's certain combos that pretty much every enemies have that can one shot kill you pretty much. Like, some enemies will have like eight hit combos, which are just stupid. This guy's tricky to backstab. You have such a long wind up to do it. And if you don't start winding it up immediately after he's gone behind you and you have sight of his back, you're not going to get it. Luckily, this character does take a long time to turn around, so you'll have some opportunities. It's just that side jump that gets him away from you. Yeah. You might just beat him with your fists. <laughs> he's getting close. Or he'll get me. Oh, fuck. Come on. There you go. There. Aw, oh, shit. Yeah, it's very finicky. They made backstabs almost too difficult, but it's probably why they're that much stronger than they used to be. It's a backstab with them two hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you get killed by a crow. <laughs> That's like, ah! That happened the first time I played. Now, this is what we mentioned, that you're, gonna, you're just going to go to the Hunter's Dream and then wake up dead. <laughs> nice little nap teleportation. <laughs> and I'll, never mind, we didn't see that. It happened, though. <laughs> well, it's the same cutscene. I am going for the Hunter Axe. So the question, maybe it's just something up to debate for lore sakes, because it wasn't really explained. What are the messengers? I don't think we've gone far enough to really know. There are things that are connected to the Hunter's Dream. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, the door to Garman is already open. I think it's you, once you actually get to the Central Yarnum uh, Lantern is when he actually opens his door. Because it's assumed by that point that you've died. Are you? Then I'm very sorry, but... Here, I'm trying to get a look at her myself. I am Yosefka. The patients here in my clinic must not be exposed to... I've heard there's a... If you look at her at the right angle, she's actually holding a gun. That's the other version. This version's not. This is the nice one. Sorta. This is all that I can do. Now... Yeah, yeah, I got her yellow blood. This is all I can do, shoves an entire box of pizza through that crack. But I have nothing more to offer. Please... I'm sorry, it's rather cold. I can only pray for a fruitful hunt. She's voiced by the woman who voices the witch in Demon Souls. This might seem like a, a kind of a stereotype in this kind of game format, but with all the kind of Halloween-esque sort of thing going on, I was kind of hoping there was an enemy that would utilize jack-o'-lanterns in some way. <laughs> like a headless horseman sort of thing. I think this game's strength is not doing anything predictable. Because these these guys, the people in Yarnum are basically vampires. It's, they drink and live off of blood. They're turning into werewolves. There are enemies later which are basically witches. But nobody uses those words, nobody acts in the expected way that those creatures and monsters are typically portrayed. So they become fresh again. I think if they were to do what has been done before, it wouldn't be. Well, they're basically just, be, basically they'd just be pulling a Legend of Zelda. Let's put it in there and just call it a different name. Werewolves, they're beasts. <laughs> I mean, come on, they have skeleton enemies, they have ghosts. They have executioners. Yep. Which by the way, let's fight the one that Travis decided he didn't want to deal with. There's actually an interesting way to cheese a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little forward thinking into the uh, game I itself. It, it. If you get on a certain angle up there where the gate is and you jump just the right way, you'll actually end up on the other side of the gate where it's the other side of Lysifka's clinic and you can actually get there way earlier than you're supposed to. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Do it, damn it. Oh, oh, I whiffed it right past him. That would have been bad. Uh, 
It's hard to tell the right timing for him. With this character, it's tough just because it's a slower character, so it's easy to just swing way too early or fire too early with him. He's laid on the hug. Punch of Blood Cocktail. Have we gotten one of those in your run? I believe I might have picked him up, but I really haven't utilized him much. There's certain characters that are really weak to that shit. Yeah, use them as distractions. Uh, you can also get a uh, blood gem from him, which we'll be worrying about later, and blood vials. So I attempted the trick that Travis just mentioned so many times, and I came to the conclusion that they patched it out. Huh. Specifically what you did, you would come over to here, and using probably like the saw cleaver, I think was the best one, you did a strong attack, and doing that would launch you right through the gate. And as long as you didn't fall off of it, you could go to the other side of the clinic. That thing you're not supposed to get to until, like, halfway through the game, I think. Which I think would give you, um... I don't know if there's any weapons on this side, but I know you can get, like, probably the... ...and things like that. Right. But that's a long ways off. I wish you could have done a double visceral. <laughs> the both visceral. <laughs> it's interesting how your character, no matter what weapon they have, they always use their fist as the visceral attack item of choice. Like, they didn't do what they did in a lot of the other Souls games where each backstab was unique to the weapon being used. I think that would have been pretty cool, though. Like, getting, like taking a Tauntaurus and just stabbing to someone's back and then turning them into, like, a light bulb. <laughs> that didn't quite do what I expected. But I'll take it. So, there's a ton of guys here. Travis was being very careful, but I've got the Hunter's Axe. I do a huge sweep. It's actually not too hard to crowd control these guys. With the, with, yes, the hunter's axe, yes, not with the cane. <laughs> right. The cane, I think, is one of the worst weapons in the game. <laughs> ah. See, the only thing, and I hope it's something that maybe they'll adjust it later in the game, is that they've made the hunter axe just so damn strong that skill builds are kind of tough to use. Like, they really don't see too many benefits until maybe the Blades of Mercy become available, but that's a really expensive drop. I'm talking a little bit ahead in advance here, and you're just going to have to find out what we're talking about later. Yeah. <laughs> it will happen, though. You'll see. You'll all see. Maybe I just kind of want more of the Halloween feel, just because I do like the Halloween aesthetic, and this does have sort of a gothic Halloween thing going on. I'm sure Halloween wasn't the intention. Just Victorian London. Yeah, Victorian London sort of thing. No. <laughs> Stay down. Once I learn that the dogs just immediately flop over when you shoot them, I never not do it. Dogs are just also easy to avoid. Oof. They're very deliberate. Now there's some dogs later that are not quite as easy to deal with that are covered in blades, but that's another deal. <laughs> this guy. The guy with the shield is going to take forever to come over to me. He's not going to notice, so... <laughs> I have no peripheral vision. <laughs> Ew, gross. Disinfect it. Now, fire being in areas like that is actually sometimes rather useful because you can sometimes corral enemies into walking into the flames. <laughs> Depending on how big the flame area is. They're not that smart. As long as you don't do it yourself, because it hurts you a lot. <laughs> you see it all cocky. <laughs> no one else does it, shit. Why would you do anything else? That R2 is so overly... Powerful. Candy Graham. <laughs> I didn't even need to do that, but I don't care. Do you think maybe just because this is such an early version of the game that the weapons are kind of under... Kind of... There's some that are definitely more balanced to for later game than others. Some of them just feel like kind of gimmicky, and then other ones are just like... Okay, this one causes, like, even, like, the biggest enemy to fly backwards, like, that hunter's axe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm sure they'll balance it more as the patches come in. 
That and they also need to, um, a I don't know, maybe they did this on purpose, but like if I notice that stat alignments when it comes to grades of the attack, like if you have like an A modifier to a weapon, doesn't boost it as much as you would think. Yeah, not really. Only like a couple of damage points. It would almost like, well, the clothes itself are, I can understand because there's really not armor in this game. So it, it does become a little bit of a styling competition. You just basically wear what you want. Yeah. The stat, at least on defense, seems less useful than, say, poison increase, at least uh, resistance and frenzy re increase resistance and things like that. But otherwise, just wear the hell what, whatever you want. I saw someone beat the game in a, uh, in a, like, you can get just dresses and things like that later. <laughs> These guys are no fun. This is how you fight them normally. I just cheesed them. Yeah. I love that overhead swing. It's almost as strong as the strong attack. It's pretty decent because if you just do a tapped R2, it is an overhead swing into like a different set of combos with that particular weapon. Also, one thing I find it unique compared to Dark Souls is that with Dark Souls, you could only do like reposts against like humanoid enemies. But in this game, you can do riposte pretty much against anything that has an attack. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you can't riposte are like tiny things, like crows and shit like that. The crows are the ultimate enemy here, that's what I'm saying. Well, most beasts were humans, so it makes sense. Oh, we traded that one. <laughs> Is it just me also, or is this story more confusing than any of the Dark Soul ones? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, keep in mind, I've only uploaded the part immediately after you beating Father Gascoin. Well, yeah. Well, that, I'm, not, I'm definitely not asking you to go into detail, but just kind of consider like, hmm, yes. Hmm, yeah, yeah. We do seem to learn more than Dark Souls ever told us. But... That's true. It does feel like this game does a little bit more of a direct telling you of things. Even then, I'm still a little confused about things. But we'll get to that in good time. God, stupid dogs. So it turns out in this area, yeah, they actually jump out of the cages if you don't kill them. That one, I don't think you can kill before it jumps out. I don't think it happens to some of the cages, not all of them, though. Yeah, the ones with the actual openings visible. Our favorite area. <laughs> We've been back here maybe once. No. <laughs> Not going to help. That's an old Dark Souls tactic. I don't need to worry about the rolling boulder. And just completely avoiding the Cleric Beast. Because honestly, click the Cleric Beast is almost a side boss. Yeah. You need to be careful, because one time I actually did fall off of that ledge. Yeah, it's, I can see that being pretty easy. I was hoping he would when I launched him. And you know they do that shit on purpose. Like, they know that a lot of people are just going to run back not looking. Yeah. Now, when I recorded this, you had not killed the boar this way. Or the giant pig. You'd actually gone running out, and the pig could hear that. But even when we're all just walking around in the water and making splashes... The enemies can't hear you as long as you're just walking. Prepare to flinch. No. He screams and I don't blame him. Your arm goes right up there. Let's do it again. <laughs> you might want to take a shower there, Vaginal Cannon Supreme. Or maybe not. That was Rectal Cannon Supreme. Oh, Rectal... So, the, yeah, either way, that's her sister, um. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be our third run. <laughs> and it'll also look like Pac-Man with a ponytail. <laughs> Head back and out up to this side area. I think you went over here in the recording? Not really. I, I think I popped over here to grab, maybe grab the stones, but yeah, I think that's all I did. Good view over this area. I, I love this. This game definitely is shortcut porn. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> Say something, Rick. <laughs> I 
come over this way. This is a different path down to the sewers. And there's a couple of goodies we can get as long as we come from this way. Also, if you go here under level, it's a little tough. A little bit. Because we got the upright walking beasts walking around. And they hit for a lot of damage, but they're also very deliberate in their swings. Just trying to remember where all the items and enemies are. Two of them have torches, one of them doesn't. But you can see the other one walking over there. I love dashing in for the attack. Dashing in is the best way to go because, especially if they hit you trade blows, you can still get in there and get that visceral. This guy really wrecks you. But I do that, so it's okay. <laughs> if that does fix everything. <laughs> oh shit. Sort of. That's the time you don't really want to go dashing in. <laughs> what is the hell is this? A bar fight? <laughs> I might have won that. <laughs> I think I did that just because it was funny. <laughs> Strategies by Thorn. Basically. It felt like a no, stop that. No. <laughs> There's also a lot of rats down here. You can't ignore them because I don't think there's anything down there. You see that light? No, no. Oh, I missed. That light's where the other guy with the torch went. This is not going to end well. Because now I've attracted all of the rats. And no, don't go too far. I can do this. Oh, I need to do it. Oh, shit. They're almost cute with their little wiggly noses. <laughs> Don't you just want to hug them? No. Ooh! Now that I've opened up the way towards the Cleric Beast, and I have the insight, when you use the Beckoned Bell down here, near that sign, we can summon a friend for the boss fight. And you'll never believe who it is. Pac-Man? <laughs> oh, I wish. It's Father Gascoigne. Hello there, Father Gascoigne. You are very tall. I forgot how tall you were. He is not happy. And then I accidentally summon other people. I didn't mean to do that. My intention was to just fight him with Gascoigne. But I guess we're going in with an entourage. The interesting thing is that, and I don't know why the game didn't do this, but there's that whole mission I was showing with the, the girl that was in the uh, window. And if you go with her with Father Gas going with you on your team, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't react. This also tells you a little bit on the story that Gas going kind of freshly went insane when you fought him. So, I mean, it, it was something that hit him kind of right as you walked up, pretty much. Hello. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> you can tell by what the person's wearing, they've gotten pretty far in the game. Or they maybe they had done that through the gate glitch. Most likely. Because by doing that, that's how you get that set of armor. Calm down. <laughs> and then I summon another person. Stop so it. We are full up on people. This is not going to be slow. Go and beat the shit out of that character. That boss is going to be like, haha, one on one fuck. <laughs> I like that Gascoigne does a lot of the attacks that he does in his boss fight. And I think I mentioned—I think I mentioned this before, but NPCs are trash in boss fights. Yeah, he sucks. Which is too bad. I mean, they have a lot of health, but like they're—they don't know how to dodge. Okay, look at that damage that person's doing. I think they—they they call that twinking. They did in Dark Souls. At least this person's using it for good. Yeah, that's rare when they're doing that sort of thing and allowing you to summon. He could just show up and just kill you and be a jerk. So, okay. you see how they're getting stuck at the gate and how Gascoigne did that walking through the fog thing? Sashay. If you've been summoned, <laughs> then there is a fog gate there, but not for the person that you've come into the world for. Now watch Gascoigne not do the right thing. Yeah, but still watch how this goes. 
you will see going in right into his face is a generally good idea as long as you dodge the attacks. And why you have four people. <laughs> yeah, but even when it's just you, as long as you keep attacking him, as you can see, we're crippling his limbs. When you cripple a new limb, that stuns him for a good long period. So that's what it's like cheesing the cleric beast. <laughs> My intention was to either go in with Father Gascoigne, which he wouldn't have helped much, so it might as well have just been me. But uh. So wait, the NPCs that you summon... Uh, oh, no, they, there they go. I was like, wait, they stick out past the boss? Just for a little bit. Wow, that guy went all the way to Upper Cathedral Ward. He had that pose. Yeah, you don't get that till much later. That guy must have been going through that game not leveling. But again, I, in this game, I think that'd be really tough just because the weapons and the armor grades don't make up for a lot of that problem. But at the same time, if you get an axe at your starting level that can make it, get you through the entire game, I guess it's possible. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we never pointed it out in Travis's run, but when you first enter a boss arena and the boss appears, you get a bit of insight right at that start, and then you get another bit of insight after you've killed them. So I got two just by seeing the Cleric Beast, and then two by killing him. Insight's definitely an a interesting interpretive thing when it comes to this game, and it has a lot to do with the plot, but at the same time, it's like, there's a, I think there's room for debate when it comes to insight. Which I think we do a bit of in your run. Yeah. Oh, whoop, whoop. see ya. <laughs> I'll get it later. Ah, I'm not actually dead, by. I don't know if I cut this out of the part that I just uploaded, but that is the uh, costume that Travis was talking about that's in the sewers. It's a better looking hunter's garb. Also, um... If you at least try to pick up as many kind of throwing knives as you can, if you have a skill based character, that is one of the benefits of skill characters is that the throwing knives get boosted based on your skill. So you actually get some increased damage with them. So it's actually useful, especially when you start getting things like the poison knives later. Oh, huh. I should I should think about that. The throwing knives and the poison knives do some decent damage on their own, too. The poison knives are ridiculous. I guess they did this on purpose, but the, I guess since the bosses are so hard, they gave them some very interesting weaknesses. Obviously, some of them like fire weakness, but there's also some bosses with poison issues. So if you just spam them with throwing knives, you can kill some of the bosses in this game. Oh, yeah. We might end up doing that for at least one of the enemies. Don't know about the bosses. There's a particular large blue guy that it's good against. Yeah. So that's the easy way down to this guy and that corpse. To me, this feels like they just these guys are people that fell down in the sewer and because they lost their legs, they couldn't get back out. So I don't think they're dead necessarily. They're like zombies or maybe they may be zombies. I don't know. Horror. What's a zombie in Yarnum? Really? A Stalfos. <laughs> uh. I hate that thing he was doing. It was like an arm march. Also, one thing I never r really saw in this game, or at least maybe I never thought about it, is, you know, you have all these times of getting access to these vials of blood. How come we never ran into, like, a Yarnum blood factory or something like that? Because it's everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. Like, just a bunch of, like, people strapped down to, like, kind of like cow udders sort of thing. I know it was a horrible thought that is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's bloodborne. I mean, come on. That's going to be it for Vaginal Cannon Supreme for this part. <laughs> did you just, did you see it the way I said it? How did you say it? Vaginal Cannon Supreme. <laughs> yeah, th that's how it's pronounced. Of course, of course. It's, it's not like any kind of like French pronounced Vaginal. <laughs> <laughs> that's how she goes Supreme. in public. Supreme. That'd be Italian. Supreme. <laughs> no, that'd just be like a pizza. <laughs> Take the Vaginal Cannon Supreme. Stuff through Yusefka's clinic's door. So there it is. We tied it all together. <laughs> we were so smart. <laughs> I couldn't finish this vaginal cannon supreme by myself. <laughs> the cheese has been expertly shaped. <laughs> and shoved through this door crevice. <laughs> so you know it's good. Since you've watched all the way through this video, 
I'll go ahead and link the video that Vaginal Canon Supreme comes from. If you know about Spider Janitor, it's the same thing. I'm not sure if it comes from the same Mad Lib, but it's from the same Mad Living session. Never give like a, us an opportunity to name characters because it gets really ridiculous. I could have chosen some other really awful ones. Let me see if I can find them. Monkey D. Douchey is one I came up with. <laughs> Monkey D. Douchey. Zeus McFuck Dick. <laughs> I was going to choose Spider Janitor also. The, the Spider Janitor, the one. The Spider Janitor. Yep. This one, it wasn't in the Mad Lib, but it was something that my sister used to say, Ronald McJagger. <laughs> now I'm just imagining just photoshopped McJagger with uh, red hair, <laughs> sobbing and then shoving a cheeseburger in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Why sobbing? <laughs> because he's just thinking about where his life went, the where he's become both a clown and a rock star. And though it hurts him, it's still delicious. <laughs> Hey, you, get off of my shoe. Get off of my clown. <laughs> there it is. The vaginal supreme combo. <laughs> now at McDonald's. McJaggers. McJ McJaggers. That's my Ronald McJagger. <laughs> ba da ba ba ba, shove it through a door. <laughs> ba da ba ba ba, shove it up a pig. <laughs> I just like if I if I ever worked at a fast food restaurant, I would just have one of these days where I got really pissed at work. I would act like the uh, drive-through window couldn't open, so I just shove their meals through like the crack that only ha open like halfway. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> the bag explodes into their car. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, ma'am, sir, 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 ma'am. <laughs> have a good day, matey. <laughs> We have to go pirate theme here. It's Wendy's. 